Guys, it's the Cook and the Coach podcast. I'm Kenny, I'm the Cook. Bays, I'm the Coach. Welcome back, everyone. Dude, I almost ran over somebody with my car today. So it was on, Too soon. I was on Nicollet Avenue, and this guy, it's like, this guy was crossing the street. It's like dark outside. He crossed the street right behind. So it was like, I went through the stoplight, and then you know how your eyes adjust when you, it's like, when you go through like a light that's bright? He was right yeah. in that spot where you shouldn't be, like when your eyes are adjusting, yeah. dressed in all black, black hat, only white thing were his shoes, and he was running, he was literally like 50 years old, and he was running diagonally, slowly, to not get hit by the car. It's like, come on, man. It's so annoying, dude. I get mad at that because it's just like, don't make, don't make me be the guy who killed someone with their car. It's purely selfish, you know? I just hate no, that shit. No, yeah, don't worry about his well-being. Just, I don't give a shit, dude. He, he literally ran into it. Don't make me the guy who killed somebody with their car. I just hate that, man. It's so annoying. It's just the most annoying thing I've ever heard. But anyways, yeah, I almost I, killed someone today, but we're all good. It's all fine. I say too soon because do you hear about um, Henry Suggs? The I don't know third? who that is. So he's an NFL player. I think he's a rookie. Like, hot young receiver. Like, not like a superstar, but, you know, up and comer. Like, people are starting to know some, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I can't know if it was last night or two nights ago. But um, he he got, like, super drunk at Top Golf, Drove home at, like, 160 miles an hour. And he's, he's now deceased. But, no, he, he he killed a guy. Ooh. He hit a guy. Driving 160 well, drunk? He, well, they said he hit him at 127, but I mean, what's the difference at that point? Yeah, at that point. Apparently That's... his blood alcohol level is like 0.16, Ugh. which is like twice the legal limit, which Bro. is insane. Dude, and it's like, yeah, now someone's dead, and now you're also the guy who's who killed somebody with their car for the rest of your life. Yeah. I was in a play... In uh, high school, and it was ba- it was so depressing, dude. It's called Rabbit Hole, yeah. And it was all about you came to see it, I think. Uh, you and Dave and some of the the bros, I think y'all came. Yeah, it was at theater in the round, and it was just about like, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah so. who like a teenager who ran over a kid with his car, and it's just the parents grieving that the yeah. whole show. And that show fucking stuck with me, man. I think about that all the time when I drive. It's fucking, it's so depressing. Yeah. Bro, speaking of tragic stuff, and I didn't even write this down in the notes, but did you hear about the Alec Baldwin shit? Did you see anything about yeah. that? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that, it's like kind of wild. It's like kind of wild how like so many people are like, joking about it. Yeah, it is, it is like, like sad. Like it's like, it's genuinely like sad and depressing, but like a lot of people are like taking stabs at him. It's like. Oh, I know. That's like, it's a little rough. <sighs> Bro, I. I it's, but to be fair, we did the same thing with Caitlyn Jenner. Would she, we should kill someone with her car. Oh, uh, I guess so. I honestly feel like not a lot of people talked about that. I didn't hear that much about it. I feel like everyone knew about it, but no one talked about it. But if you did talk about it, you were joking about it. Right. Yeah. The one thing that I saw was funny. I took a screenshot of it. I would, I'll try to show you later. But um, it was this article because like Alec Baldwin apparently like, thought the tragedy happened. And then he and his wife or whoever, they all just fled they like worked with the police and then they fled essentially just to get out the public eye. i think they went to like massachusetts or somewhere like up yeah north. and anyways um it was so like this i think it was like fox there was like a, a news story that came up and it was like oh uh, someone saw alec baldwin and that was the whole story so that someone just saw Alec Baldwin in Massachusetts, okay. in this town. And literally, it was like the most like, oh, go find a story about anything we possibly can. So yeah. literally, they were interviewing. It was like, yeah, I couldn't tell if he was like wearing a jacket or if he just had like a button down shirt. But I did see him like that level of like minutia. Yeah. Like, it was so funny, dude, reading it. It was like, it almost felt like small town vibes. But Listen, Trump's not an office tomorrow. I need something else to talk about. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. I feel like there's plenty. I feel like we've filled the time well. Yeah. <laughs> in his absence. But to quickly circle back to the Henry Suggs story. Um, yeah. Well, it was like, we made a like... Back to that s- sad story. <laughs> what, made, what made even more sad, to add on top of it, is like, like yeah, obviously a sad story. Like someone tracks, lost her life due to a stupid decision mm-hmm. made by him. But then also, like there was like a really cool like storyline because like him and his friend, best friend he played college with, Mm-hmm. He went to Alabama. His best friend went to Alabama. They're both receivers. Sure. That's pregame ritual they do where like they kind of like dunk a basketball together, like okay, you know. Yeah. 
and now they're on separate teams because they're in NFL now. Right. But they were playing against each other, like, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, and they, like, they did a ritual before the game, so it was a kind of cool moment, like, oh, we're here at NFL together, like, hmm. we're comp our dreams. It was, like, a cool, like, yeah, that's you cool. know, story, you know? And then now he goes and does that. So oh. it makes that image, like, that much sadder. It is, yeah. You know? Well, I'm glad that we're even more sad. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off on a great note, guys. I was going to do a Kenny's Kitchen this week about Great British Baking Show, but it was Halloween, and so my family didn't meet up to watch it this week. Uh, so next week, we're going to do like a two-episode recap of that. Okay, perfect. You didn't perfect. come to borrow the the Hobbs, uh, the tiger, for the costume. Did you find I, something else to wear? I for did. I, 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 be, I was a SWAT team member. Eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, dude? Listen. That's so easy, I feel like. This happens every Halloween. I want to be the guy who's into Halloween. I want to be the guy who, like, gets really into it, like, goes to all these parties, like, has multiple costumes, like, really goes all out with the costumes. Yeah. But every year, it's like, oh, Halloween is literally tomorrow. What am I doing? And it's just like, I don't really want to do anything. Meh. <sighs> So you just don't actually care about it. You just want to be... A, you like the idea of being someone I, who's into Halloween. I want to want to care about it. Mm. You know what I mean? I get that. I think part of it too is since... I think a big part of it is since it's like at the end of football season. Mm -hmm. I'm just so tapped out and burnt out. It's like... Right. I just want to sleep. Oh, dude. You're like, exhausted. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's a horrible time I don't of the care. year to, to get into it. Like, I really want to get B into Halloween. I just... I just never get into it when the time comes. <sighs> Security guard is so like, okay, what do I have in the apartment <laughs> right now? I, I went to Spirit Halloween. I got the $15 vest. I bought the $10 shades. You actually found something at Spirit Halloween. That's yeah. shocking. Yeah. I, I went there at Mall of America with my sister like the day before, and it was to it looked like it had been raided. Everything it, was gone. It was the only thing that was in my price point and it actually fit me. Really? So everything else did not fit me. It's like, yeah, this is what I'm going with. Dude, um, yeah. When I got there, there was like a handful of wigs and like a couple like cat costumes for girls or something like that. That was like pretty much it. Speaking of girl costumes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ken Possible. I went as uh, Kim Possible from the show. It was a lot of fun. I wore actually these pants. Did a crop top for the first time. I cropped a black t-shirt. Got those black combat boots. I, I want did, you to put a uh, picture of you on the screen. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll share it. I'll share yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I have the uh, the brown belt, just extra ward and long, just on the side. Was there anything else I did for it? I think. Oh, yeah. And I also did, uh, I took some black gloves, like the thin version, and then I just used those because I didn't want to go buy gloves. But yeah, it was fun. <laughs> now, Ken, we've yeah. discussed in the show that you're trying to accomplish Jackrabbit Summer, i.e. Oh, Jackrabbit Fall now. Right. I know, dude. Look, I my sister is this costume helping your endeavors? I don't know if it's helping, but I was like, ah, screw it, dude. Can I, I answer it for you? <laughs> <laughs> can, hey, can I step in? <laughs> yeah, it's fine, dude. I don't care. It's what it is. This is what I have to deal with, guys. It's Halloween, dude. You're not gonna just have some fun and dressing up, dude. A security guard, dude. At least Are you kidding me? At you least. can't even come to me and talk to me about my costume when you went with security guard. How many numbers did you get? How many numbers? I wasn't there to get numbers. I went to a concert. With I was my working. And her friend. I was working. Okay. A bar crawl. Sure. I had literally maybe five, six different girls come up to me and say, "Hey, like, are you single?" Oh, that's and nice. And two of them just like like asked me for a number, and I gave me I gave them the number, whatever. That's great. I wasn't even trying. I, I Neither was I. Least. Neither no, was I. No, 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 no. You were trying too hard. Mm -mm. No, I put that tank you top on. You wore a crop top. I was not trying to, like, no, I wasn't trying to do anything. I'm, all I'm saying is, if you're trying to make this a jackrabbit fall, you are sending the opposite messages. Bro, that's for, all I'm saying. For one night, that's dude, all I'm, I saying. Can, I'm comfortable sending the the wrong message one night, dude. I don't care. On the one night where every girl dresses slutty on purpose because it's allowed on that one night. I wasn't going out to drink, dude. I went to a, a concert with my sister and her friend, and then we went to like a bar and a half just so that they could drink and we could like dance for a minute, and then we bounced. That was it. Okay. I wasn't working a bar crawl. That's a different situation anyway, because then you're always around people. That's totally different, bro. 
Also, I bet you were trying a little bit. I put that tank top on no, and no, I was no, like, no, no. literally, I don't care what happens. It's just going to be fun. This is preposterous. Preposterous. Right, dude. I can handle one night, dude. I don't know if you can, frankly. I don't try. Hmm? There you go. Guys, know the deal. Chill Botanicals. Go to my Instagram page. Hit the link in my bio. Or you go to chillbotanicals.com. Use the code BASE20 for 20% off your whole order. That includes the Bra Spectrum CBD Energizer Blend. It's a fantastic stuff. I use it every morning. Or you can use the Delta 8 gummies, which I'm on right now. Helps you relax at night. Helps you to calm down and wind down. Fantastic stuff. Again, that's code BASE20. Coach's Corner. So, Squatober is over. Unfortunately, but dead December is coming. So be a lookout for that new vlogs coming soon. Is that through the same page that was doing the squat tober thing? Uh, same company, different guy writing the programs, but same, you know, overall nice. people. Nice. Um, so yeah, that'd be lots of fun. Jess would be joining me for that. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, it is volume phase, which is the worst phase of training. If you ask me, especially for a strength athlete, whether you're a strong man competitor, um, powerlifting competitor, it's the worst time. That's just, it's what it is. But it's necessary. So just to give people, you know, this little small taste of the, of the strength and conditioning world. Um, basically, when you are training athlete for peak performance, you want to have very high intensity, but very low volume. Um, but in order to get to that point, you have to, get, you have to build a base, right? In your training. And the way you build that base is having a lot of volume, um, sporadic amounts of intensity, but you need a lot of volume to build a base. You kind of build a pyramid from that big volume base going up and up where you're coming down volume but going higher intensity. So you get to your peak where you have a lot of intensity but very little volume. So I am looking towards March to compete, which means right now, through the next month, month and a half, I have to put in as much volume and tax the body as much as possible, which means a lot of sets, a lot of reps. Not as heavy as weight, but, you know, still a decent amount of weight, but as many reps, as many sets as possible. So I'm doing it right now. Uh, 10 sets. So my squat and bench are basically 10, 8, 6, 4 reps. And then deadlift will kind of be varied depending on what I need for that week. Um, and it sucks. It sucks really? balls. Like, it's it's basically cardio. I If you're a power lifter, anything above five reps is cardio, in my opinion. Hold on, hold on, pause. There's a... Did I get it? It's on the mic. Aha, I got it! This thing was circling you. Dude, nice, sorry dude. to interrupt. Look at that. Look at that instinct. I have I been having a it. battle. It, oh, I, was, I thought you noticed for sure. I've been Look having a gnats. battle with the gnats. My mom warned me. Sorry to just totally derail your situation. No, no, no. But my mom warned me. I started to do an herb garden in one of my, my east-facing windows. It was doomed to fail. But she warned me, like, if you bring plants that are at some, like, outdoor garden spot, you're going to be bringing in some bugs, and you should change the whole soil. I didn't listen to her. Mm. And sure enough, dude, for months now, I've been battling these. So, well, basically, they've been infesting. And so now I've been battling it. I've been doing a solution. I showed you. It's water, soap. So it's like water so that the gnats get attracted to it. Soap, so it sucks them down into the vortex, and so they drown. And then a little bit of sugar, just in case they, like, you know, just to attract them a little bit more. Yeah. But yeah, dude. Anyways, I just got my instincts are getting so I'm literally like catching them now and like grabbing. Showing sure, Spider Man is here, bro. Maybe I should. Mm-hmm. My brother went to Spider Man actually, and he was up in Duluth and he climbed up on some roofs. Yeah. In Duluth and would like call down to people like while they were drunk and he was having a great time with it. Man. I love it. I love. Yeah, it. like a full body suit. Like he went hard. Anyways, so, to not to derail your whole thing. Um. But yeah, basically, I'm just um doing that for the month of November. It's. It's terrible. It sucks. Volume. It's, I hate it. But it is necessary to get to the ultimate goal and get to peak performance. So that's what I'm going through right now. Um, I'll probably do a vlog or two about it this month. I'll get back to vlogging more consistently once that December begins. So that's the plan right now. Um, gonna ease. Gonna ease back into deadlifting. Uh, not because of injuries or anything, but just so I can, you know. I feel like with Delta, I just need more time to get ramped up and then get acclimated to it. And then I can hit it hard once in the new year starts. So bench and squat, lots of volume. Um, I could barely walk after a day. Me and Jess were 
exhausted, but really, we got some good quality work in, so I'm really happy about that. How's Jess doing? Good. He's uh, responding well. Um, he's basically just taking on anything I throw at him. So now um, we did Squattober. Now we're doing a little more experimentation with this volume phase. Um, I'm actually doing a couple experiments in December on myself, combined with that December, see how I can make my training work best for me. Hmm. So he'll be along for that journey. Um, I think he'll respond well to it. So I'm excited to see how, how he does. That's exciting, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, for coaches, or for not for coaches, sorry, for Kenny's Kitchen uh, this week, I just want to do a quick recap. Um, we talked about it last week. We had the grand opening at my weekend job where I cook. I cook at Union Monk Kitchen. I've been cooking there for like a year and like nine months or something like that now. it's It's been a long time. Maybe something like that. It's been a long time. Yeah. And anyways, we finally have our new home for Union Monk Kitchen at Gray's in North Loop in Minneapolis. Uh, it's really cool. We had an awesome grand opening, and dude, it was fun. It was, it got good. really busy. Good, it was, good, good. So I got That's to, sick. I actually got to work. I got to work uh, that opening night. I literally just came in just to be hand. So I was literally just doing dish whatever they needed me to do, just because yeah. they were rolling. And I worked that day too, so I actually wasn't even scheduled. Like the night before, they texted me like, "Yo, like if you want to come in, like help out." And they needed it, dude, because we were yeah. like running through stuff. Like we basically sold like all. The team like prepped so much stuff for the weekend and we were out. We were like completely out of certain things mm -hmm. after like Friday night, yeah, <laughs> which was crazy. Like we had done so much preparation. So it was really cool. Like Chef Yia was doing the yakitori grills out front and then people would come inside, get more food. And anyways, yeah, the food's really good. Yep. Um, and the whole weekend was really fun, man. Like we have some new people on the team that are fucking awesome and I got to work the line a little bit, worked on prepping some shrimp, doing POS. I haven't worked a PO. Have you ever worked a POS before? POS? Like a, like kind of like just the register, essentially. Like whatever, if, whether it's oh. the iPad. Or, you're just working with yeah, customers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't done one of those since I was 19, I think. Yeah. 19 or maybe. Well, whatever it was, it was... I started maybe when I was 19, but my first ever job, like since then I've, I haven't done that. Yeah. So basically just doing everything. We all rotated and got to do different things and yeah, it's been really, really fun. So good deal. I'm excited. So yeah. Yeah. So I'm basically going to be working at Gray's on the weekends. So basically every Saturday and Sunday, it looks like my shifts are going to be like 10 to six or so. So if you're in the area, come through and support. I'm usually going to be there on the weekends. Um, we also have like a commissary kitchen that we're using, which is just like a, a space where we can do bulk work. Mm -hmm. So probably some Saturdays I'll be there. But yeah, dude, I'm really excited. It's Hell been yeah. fun. Guys, you see the fit? Nagani. Nagani. It is now officially launched. Go check it out. Go to NaganiWare.com. Spot right there for you if you can't if you can't see it. NaganiWare.com. Use code BEZA. 20. That's right. To give your boy a promo code, use code BEZA20 for 20% 20 off your order. All your fitness active wear, your eye king wear, need a new pair of joggers, leggings, shorts, uh, t shirts, sports bras, hats, whatever you need. The hoodies, go and get them. The hoodies are fantastic. Probably most of my favorite hoodies of all time. I'm being dead serious. You need to check these hoodies out. Go get it right now. Nagani, use code BEZA20. Uh, twenty. Bays at twenty. Kind of a slight Kenny's kitchen, but did you see all the stuff on the on the stove? No, nah, what's on? So, I I won't show it on camera just because it's it's currently drying. But so I got a new cutting board, which I'm really excited about. Like a teak. oh, you got it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a teak cutting board that's real big. It's like perfect size for my counter. Plenty of room for prepping. And uh, basically, I've just been trying to gather some new kitchen tools for my apartment and then also for work. So mm -hmm. like at work, I have this really nice new thermometer and like this and that. Um, but if you have like wooden kitchen tools, it's important to like take care of them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people will use like a mineral oil sometimes just to kind of hydrate it. Um, basically because like a lot of wooden stuff, it's not good to put it in the dishwasher and water will dry it out if it's weird. But I think it like, pulls out the oils or something like that. Mm. So basically you just need to replenish the oils in the wood to keep it from cracking and just being really dry and gross. So anyways, I started doing that today and all, like literally every wooden thing that's kitchen related right now is all just, I just lathered it in this uh, mixture of 
there was this mix there that I got of beeswax and mineral, like a food grade mineral oil. Okay. And that should, so I got to let it go overnight and then it should be good to go and ready to use. But dude, I'm excited. It's like, oh, it's just great. I'm like on the end of gathering all the tools I need um, for kind of like my 2.0 kitchen that I've been working on. So hell yeah. Yeah. Just a few things left, but we're getting close. Which will, I'll have a, there's actually a Kenny's Kitchen that's related for next time that I'll talk about, which is a great tip if you're in Minnesota, but we will, we'll talk about that next time. But should we get to, uh, what you jamming? Yeah. Do you have songs or should I jump in first? What you jamming equals new album for Ed Sheeran is out and I was wrong. You were wrong about what? Uh, it was going to be like a slapper. Listen, it was, it was all right. You always you always bring the like the reactions pretty early on, like with the reviews. Internet, I, I, the the internet, the internet's been super critical of his album. Like they are shitting all over this album. Sure. Like the I haven't seen public opinion has been shitting all over this album. Yeah, it's like first week. Who cares about the first week's like reviews? Everyone, what do you mean? <laughs> totally disagree. Not if you really like love music, dude. You let things simmer for a little bit. You like let's see like, see how it handles. Everyone's it. been shitting on it. Mm-hmm. I like it. I don't love it. I, I there's felt, definitely some low points on the album. In terms of how I enjoyed it, I did I did enjoy it. All the songs made my playlist. Um, I the one song that I love, which is actually one of the songs. That's on my like three recommendations for this week is Tides, the opening track. It's good set, good track, oh, solid track. It's all like chaotic, and then it has these very like, oh, just like very Bruce Springsteen, Bruce Spring. How you say his last name? Bruce Springsteeny. Steen, yeah. <laughs> You're trying to say Steeny, which is why yeah. Bruce Springsteeny. Yeah, uh, it kind of is, yeah. but yeah, like real chaotic verses, and then this like very like tender, like warm. Um, I don't know what it would be. Refrain in the middle. It's so mm-hmm. nice. My main one was Overpass Graffiti. A lot of people didn't like that song. I, it's the best song on the album. Nothing comes close. I don't. Nothing comes close to that song on the album. Fantastic. Love it. Love the love the hook. <laughs> through and through. I, it's on repeat. It's on constant repeat right now for me. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people hate on Ed Sheeran, but that's also something that he's kind of dealt with for a long time. But like, I want to say that people like shit on pop music. Like, pop music is enjoyable for a reason. Well, I totally get why some by certain artists get shit on, but I, yeah. Ed Sheeran, I think, is one that I kind of get it, but I also like I disagree. You know? Yeah. But but yeah, that was actually that one made my playlist, um, dude. Speaking of like cooking at the kitchen, I was listening to a bunch of uh, oh, what's the name of the genre? Uh, Bossa Nova. Do you know about Bossa Nova? I've, I've heard, but I don't know. So I it's like, a, I believe it's uh, music from Portugal. It's like a genre from Portugal. And it's this really cool mix of, I would describe it as like kind of Latin grooves, but with jazz is kind of the closest I would okay. kind of compare it to. And uh, yeah, there's, so we, it's, it turns out it's really good music to cook to. It's, okay. it's great. It's very like. Just, uh, I don't know. It's just nice. It kind of sounds like you'd be in a kitchen. It's like Rat Tooth Alive vibe. Uh, yeah, kind of yeah. like that. Exactly. So there's one song. What's it called? It's uh, Hobo La La. It's like ho ba la la That's how you say it. And then it's okay. by Wanda De Sa. I think that's how to say it. Really nice song. Very sweet. Um, but yeah, dude. Uh, Bossa Nova is nice. It's it's uh, it's nice. A lot of guitarists on Instagram will play Bossa Nova stuff because it's okay. cool. Like, I don't know. They like to do extended chords, and it's just kind of dreamy sounding. Mm-hmm. What other songs do you have for for what you're jamming? Uh, it's really just songs with the Ed Sheeran album. I'm trying to figure mm-hmm. out what the other ones were. Well, you look. I have another one, um, Go dude. For it. So my brother played this song for me. Um, remember Owl City? Yeah, dude. Bro, who could Owl, forget? Who could forget Owl City? Uh, Owl City actually, he put out a song recently that's I really like. Yeah. It's it doesn't it sounds kind of like stuff that he used to make. It's called uh Waving Through a Window and it really sounds like it just brings me back to like 8th grade, dude. Okay. It's pretty nice. I would listen to it. I like that. It. I like I enjoy All City. I have to check that out. Yeah, it's very catchy. It's kind of dreamy. It's nice. I yeah. would, he's nice with it. He has like those very catchy like <laughs> I don't know if he would enjoy this description, but it's kind of like mom's basement pop sound. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> what does that mean? He just kind of sounds like he's in his mom's basement, but he's making slappers, you know? That's kind of what it sounds like. And I don't know if you like that. Okay. I know. It's kind of a diss, but I'm just joking. I He's like, he's great, man. Who? No one doesn't love it. Fireflies, dude, by Owl City. Come on. So uh, Wisconsin Stadium, Camp Randall. They um they play that like during like either like the third quarter or halftime whatever. Oh really? And like the whole, like they shut everything down and staying like sound wise and like the whole entire crowd of like a hundred thousand people were like singing it this together. This is what I'm saying, dude. And then Jack Harlow at his concert. Yeah, I was gonna say they- Jack Harlow did that. He yeah. started like uh in the middle of his set, he started yeah. doing that. At what was it Lollapalooza or a different? It was like a big concert. Yeah, some big venue. Just the sea of people, all were just singing it with the lights on. It's like, yeah, dude, you can talk all the shit you want about Owl City, but you know, there's a couple songs that you like. You, you can't help but sing. Oh, you can be the most hood dude in the world. And you're like, yeah, this this Bro, is the one. F- when Fireflies comes on, oh man, it's the one. It all changes up. Yeah, man. yeah, 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 for sure. God, it's so good. But anyways, yeah. yeah, the song, the newer song is called "Waving Through a Window," and it's I would check it out, but. Yeah, those are my three for this week. I like them. The the ones the other ones I like on um, that Sheeran album are um, "Leave Your Life," Clyde, and then I really really like this one Two Step." So those are the other three albums. Oh yeah, Two Step I liked. Yeah, I remember liking that one. Ooh ooh ooh, and uh, and uh, First Times. That one I really really liked too. That one was sweet. So for me, it's the best songs in the album are "Overpass Graffiti." Um, two step, first time, first times, and I like the, I like the singles too, which is shivers and bad habits. Those are good ones too. But those are one of my top three though. I just listed. So yeah, damn. I mean, not his best work, but definitely some highlights. Um, he's trying a new thing, and he says he's the most nervous about this one coming out. I saw that, and he should have been. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, he got it's, it's shat definitely, on by everyone in the industry. It's Every, definitely a diversion. No one's liking it. It's not doing numbers. <laughs> Oof, duh. Well, it's what it is. We, but are, we still love you, Ed. We still love you. Oh, I like the album. Of course. It's great. Did you ever see that one concert real quick before we switched to Talk of the Town? Um, did you ever see that one concert that he did? Probably when, like, it was probably Plus, when Plus came out or whatever. Is that what it's called? Plus? What is it called? Yeah. It is Plus. Okay, cool. Um, he it was like a concert that they showed on like PBS or something like that, mm-hmm. and it was him performing in a like a decent sized theater. It was kind of like oval shaped, and it was just him on the loop pedal and stuff. Did you ever see that? Yeah, you did see that. What I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. That was probably one of the first times I ever. That was actually the first time I saw him. My sister was a big fan of his, and then I was kind of like, oh, that music's for girls. And then he, I saw that. My sister was excited. We were watching that. I was like. Oh, this guy's sick. Oh, yeah. And then I watched him on, uh, he did a couple songs on The Green Room. Mm-hmm. They're like videos on YouTube. He did uh, You Need Me, I Don't Need You. And he like raps on that and does these crazy uh, loops. Oh, what? Yeah. Those, after I saw those videos, I was like, I'm in. Yeah. People forget. Those are so good. He he is coming out with one more album before we, he re- officially retires. And I think he can still pull off him being in a good conversation if that album is perfect. Mm. But... It's gotta be. Everybody a, has an album that people don't like, though. <laughs> What's uh, Jay Z's Kingdom Come? I mean, come on, dude. Yeah, I mean, no, you're, you're right. You're right. He it's, he would say that that was a flop. But Jay Z has a lot of albums. Ed has like right. This is fourth. He doesn't have a for ton. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, yeah, that's fair. It's harder when you have fewer ones, but like if you have fewer is. ones, they have to like each hit. I I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It's easy to be. It's like a higher percentage of your discography people don't like. I get that. Guys, check it out on social media. We got Instagram at Cooking Coach Pod. We got TikTok Cooking Coach. You can find us on YouTube. Look up the Cooking the Coach podcast. You can find all our stuff, all our videos there. Check it out, guys. We appreciate your support. Talk of the town. Talk my of the favorite town. segment. Oh my god. We go through TikToks that we sent each other. We send them to at Cook and Coach on TikTok. We also sometimes send them to our Instagram uh, at Cook and Coach Pod. Basically, just videos that we saw that we thought were super interesting or hilarious. If you want to do that, you can DM us at either of those two accounts. Send them. We're gonna scroll through some and see what our favorites were. No, you started off. All right, let's see. Let's see. So we both sent a lot this week. We did. Um, all right, so let's see if I can actually get the damn volume this time because I was. I got to go in ten, by the way. But I know, we're, yeah, we got to. But we're all right. We're doing all right. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. So I want cars out there. Let me see. Or did you park in the lot? I did. Out of desperation. 
Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. So right. I'm just going to kind of scroll around randomly, but um, but here... Oh, come on. This one just... This one made me laugh. I love a creative use of that one. But is he's, he wrong, though? He's not wrong, dude, and I, it makes me laugh, man. <laughs> yeah, so that one's that pretty good. good. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to keep scrolling through here. This is one I sent to Brayden. Have you seen this guy? No. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> he used the filter. <laughs> that filter was like super hot for like three days. And I know. That went away. It went away. Dude, he, what's his name? Brian Jordan uh, Alvarez. Brian Jordan Alvarez. He's I like one of my that. favorites. I like that. I like that. Me and Brayden always, a guest of the show, Brayden Anderson, me and him always send like our favorites. He has so many great impressions of like women from the South and stuff yeah. like that. He's fucking oh, Hilarious, man. Oh, this one was just kind of visually kind of interesting. Yeah. Go. 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 Go.